Grand Theft Auto 6 cannot save Rockstar. Now I know what you're thinking. Here's yet another impatient, ungrateful asshole crying and complaining about the newest game not releasing yet. To that I say, it's been 10 years man. All jokes aside, I think this is a very interesting topic because it invites people from every side of the argument to come forward, give their open, honest opinion about the company and how they've been moving lately. Last month, they put out a video titled The Downfall of Rockstar, The Disappointing Truth. And while that video was positively received, there are some comments I just downright don't agree with. Some are misleading, others are shit throwing, and some are actually constructive. Now, normally it would leave this in the past and let it all die, but considering it's generated quite a bit of traffic over the last week or so, and Grand Theft Auto 6 is in the news yet again, let's talk about GTA 6 and Rockstar one more time. So first, I do not doubt for one second Grand Theft Auto 6 would be amazing. I think there is this negative connotation where because you criticize Rockstar and what they're doing right now, that criticism is going to go up and completely vanish when the latest game is released. Even when I was most critical, I was sure to supply Rockstar with the benefit of the doubt in the form of positive reinforcement. Case in point with Red Dead Redemption port we recently received on the Switch and PlayStation. Most people completely shit on Rockstar and this quote unquote lazy port. And I did do the same. For two reasons, I felt they didn't do enough to warrant the $50 price tag. In terms of graphical or technical improvements, there was no ray tracing, the omission of multiplayer, the frame rate was locked at 30 FPS, and there was still popping on the PlayStation 5 for me. All of this while they still chose to leave out an entire platform. The entirety of PC players are still not allowed to play an official version of the game. Unless they plan to give the game proper care and attention somewhere down the line that it properly deserves, then unfortunately I don't think we'll ever see an official PC version. Which is interesting because Rockstar has to be aware of how many people play on PC now versus back in 2010, when Red Dead Redemption originally launched. The player base in its respective market is so much bigger now. So unless they were truly testing the waters on how financially successful a full remaster or remake for them could be, this is sadly what we're all ever going to get. Which sucks because this game deserves so much more care than it received. However, affection and love for the game aside, I did appraise Rockstar for two other reasons that I believe perfectly balanced my criticisms. Those were, while the proper respect and treatment for the legacy title wasn't reflected here, it did benefit by a second breath of life. Coming to the forefront of everyone's minds, opening up proper discussion of John Marston and his tale for trying to live in a world that he so passionately rebelled against. These ports, while not what we wanted, helped revitalize both Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. The entire series benefited from a product that was far from warmly received. That, in a way, is a very good thing. Think of all the people who went back to this game out of spite, thinking I have this on the Xbox. Fuck you, Rockstar. Or all the people who only played Red Dead Redemption 2. Even though Red Dead Redemption and John's story are old, there's an immense power a company can give even the oldest of products by simply dropping a trailer. It's almost as if they say, hey, we're thinking of this, and now so should you. It was also a good thing that it became so accessible. The accessibility factor of it grew exponentially by being placed on a portable handheld system like the Switch and then on the PlayStation consoles respectively. I still think both of those are great things. And in another twisted way, with its port being objectively overpriced, it sparked more intrigue, considering factors like the technological leap from 2013 to 2023, and it being almost priced as a modern AAA game, many people couldn't help but wonder if there was more to this. What did Rockstar have up their sleeve? We're not dealing with an EA or Activision here after all, they wouldn't sell this at this price point without something of additional value, right? There had to be something in there for us all to discover. I don't really want to keep talking about this title or anything else surrounding it or how some people still choose to defend it saying the B team was put on it to save resources that can go over to Grand Theft Auto 6. Those arguments can easily be shut down by saying A, Rockstar didn't actually handle the development, there was no B team. A different independent studio handled it, not Rockstar themselves. Which could lead to the assumptions on what Rockstar allowed and didn't allow them to change, stating it clearly it had to be a direct port only with no alterations. And if that's possible, Possible, the steep price could also mean that that's how the independent studio got paid or Rockstar got paid. Either way, no matter what, bottom line is maybe, just maybe, hold off on porting or developing anything that could be even the smallest distraction from Grand Theft Auto 6 if that is truly the highest priority. I'm just saying, you can be critical and level-headed about something with neither of those things constituting an ungrateful or disrespectful mentality that so many like to portray it as. That leads me to my next point. Just because Grand Theft Auto 6 may be a good game, that doesn't clear them of how they treated their legacy titles. With the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, or how poorly Red Dead's port was received. More than anything, I think the significance about those hiccups 
was Rockstar's own blatant lack of respect for the titles that helped define the development team that they are seen as now. Rockstar has always been at the forefront of the open world genre, setting new standards and reaching new heights in storytelling, gunplay, graphics, and overall, probably most importantly, an interactive world. A company that's willing to disregard quality for the sake of capitalizing on nostalgia and the significance of the name of their titles, titles that are probably very closely tied to people's childhoods, that's a company that should be closely kept an eye on and called out for. That's all I was simply saying with those projects. If they're willing to disregard their own history for the sake of a quick buck, for the sake of reaching deadlines, for the sake of staying in the public's eye, which they already constantly are with Grand Theft Auto 5 and even Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, there's so many things in that last game alone, even though it's not receiving the immense amount of support as GTA Online might be, the world provides so many crazy opportunities in the single player story alone for you to completely get lost in. I have well over 2,000 hours in that game. Easy, across two platforms. Rockstar will probably never leave the public's eye. It's not like their popularity will ever completely diminish. So they aren't keeping an eye on that metric. It's more so the income that they're watching. That more than likely propelled them to do the Red Dead port and even the trilogy, cutting the corners that they did. But I wholeheartedly believe Grand Theft Auto 6 will be a good game. Will it be a great game that reaches expectations? That's very, hotly debatable. Seeing how much they flex their creative arms with Red Dead Redemption 2, narratively, detailed wise, gameplay wise, the game's wildlife has its own ecosystem and so on. I also think at this point everyone has different expectations for the title. I think it'll be disappointing in some ways, innovative in others, and in a few, maybe groundbreaking. Hopefully after the leaks, we see nothing but improvements. Rockstar takes that step back, looks at the project, how far it's come along, puts their head down, doubles down, and commits on everything that they believe will succeed in this project and continues to go all in with their wow factor and their passion for making video games. As I was trying to say at the beginning of the video, Grand Theft Auto 6 alone cannot save Rockstar. Their track record has done quite a number on it over the last year or so. And something that someone has said is that all their new projects, all their major games continue to be amazing. And I think that's entirely true. I think GTA 6 will follow that track record, will follow that trend. The thing with Rockstar right now though, is with this major amount of time in between these major releases, all people can really talk about is Grand Theft Auto Online, their legacy games, or any proper news. It's just unfortunate that a lot of recent proper news pertaining to legacy games have all been negative. But I wanna hear from you down in the comments section. Do you think Grand Theft Auto 6 this singular game can save the damage that Rockstar has done to the reputation over the last year and a half to two years? Do you think with this singular game, they can really get back in everyone's good graces? Just because financially they may do very, very, very well, that monetary success isn't a proper reflection of them being in the public's good graces, of them being in good standing from public perception.